Right, thanks, Gemma. Welcome to Sports News. Coventry City boss Russell Slade has confirmed former Premier League star Yakubu Egbeni is now training with the Sky Blues with the aim of finding vital goals for the relegation battle. It is understood that the ex Potsmouth Middlesbrough Everton and Blackburn Rovers striker would stay at the Sky Blues for the rest of the season if he can prove his fitness. Egbeni is considering after a year at Turkish Super League club. The 34-year-old scored 96 goals in the English Premier League between 20, 2003 and 2012. Egypt's coach Hector Cooper has been told he has the full support of the Egyptian Football Association despite losing the Africa Cup of Nations final to Cameroon. EFA Vice President Hannah Aburida says there is no room for talks about any Cooper's contract. The 61-year-old took the job in March 2015, replacing Sharky Girib. Egypt are top of the group in the 2018 World Cup qualifiers after two games and the Argentine tactician has already instilled in his team what is required to reach a major tournament. And Canada's Denis Shapovalov has been fined $7,000 after being defaulted from his match against Great Britain's Carl Edmund in the Davis Cup. The 17-year-old was trading Edmund 6364-21 when he hit the umpire in the eye with a ball struck in anger. He must pay $2,000 for the default and $5,000 for misconduct, escaping the maximum $10,000 penalty when deemed intentional. The International Tennis Federation could still take further action. International Olympic Committee officials from 13 countries have taught Tokyo 2020 Summer Olympics venues to inspect preparations. The 31 delegates from National Olympic Committees from countries across Europe and Asia began their tour by visiting the Tokyo Metropolitan Gymnasium, a venue slated to host Olympic table tennis. They received a briefing about the facility inside the venue, a historic site which hosted gymnastics competitions during the 1964 Tokyo Olympics and was renovated in 1990. Alistair Cook has stepped down as England's test captain but plans to carry on as a player. Cook, who was appointed captain in 2012, led England in 59 tests, which includes Ashes victories at home in 2013 and 2015, as well as series wins in India and South Africa. The 32-year-old has scored more test centuries than any of his predecessors and is also the country's most prolific test batsman with 11,057 runs in 140 tests. And that's Sports News Tonight. This is back to you, Joma, for the rest of the news. Thanks a lot, Millicent. Liberian government officials will no longer be allowed to travel outside the country at their own will, owing to a new order by President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. Effective this February, heads of ministries, agencies and commissions, along with their deputies and assistants, have been banned from making any foreign trips without the permission of the president. A statement issued gave no reason for the move, but reporters on the ground say it could be because the country's foreign currency reserves have become severely depleted and the country's commodity exports have fallen. The Liberian Central Bank has had to review the alarming situation of capital flight and strengthen its regulatory measures to curb the illicit repatriation of foreign currency. Now, lawyers on both sides of the argument whether or not the suspension remains on the travel ban implemented by the Trump administration continues. Those against the ban are being backed by technology firms, which say the ban is harmful to their businesses. The order, when it was issued on January the 25th, caused confusion at U.S. and foreign airports when it came into force. The order was suspended by U.S. Federal Judge James Robert after the states of Washington and Minnesota took legal action against the travel ban on the grounds that it was unconstitutional and harmful to their interests. The judge's ruling, which suspends the seven-country travel ban, the temporary refugee admissions ban, and the ban on Syrian refugees, is designed to allow the two states time to make their case. And on entertainment news tonight, popular music producer Ties the Knot, Victoria Ido, tells us more. Here 
are your trending entertainment stories outside the Two Face and hashtag I Stand with Nigeria protest? The Nigerian Entertainment Circle also got buzzy for Nigerian Entertainment Awards nominated producer Eric Isaac Utera, popularly known as Leric, who exchanged marital vows with his girlfriend, Michelle Elia. The music producer also has worked with several artists, most notable is Burner Boy. He got married at the Ikoyo Registry, and pictures show his mom and dad proudly sharing the moments with him and his beautiful bride. The controversy trailing Toke Makiwa's new book, Unbecoming, thickens as her estranged husband, Maje Aida, threatens legal action if the books are not withdrawn from circulation. In a phone conversation with Entertainment News and Channels Television, media and entertainment attorney Ulumide Mustafa believes that the saga is already adopting a posture of unpredictability. You can catch more details from that conversation on our Entertainment News program later tonight. Moving on to new music, Adekunle Gold teams up with songstress Simi to release new video titled No Forget. The video has cameo appearances from Nollywood actress Ayo Mogaji and is directed by Clarence Peters. Osinachi Krona, Humble Smith is out with a video of his latest single, Attractor. The song of fusion of Afro and I Life is visually interpreted by Clarence Peters. HKN Music Art DK has released a video to his single, Alili, featuring label mates Mayako and Dremo. The video has come here. Clarence's from label boss Davido and Chinko Ekun and is directed by Aison. And that's all for tonight. It's back to the news at 10. Thanks a lot, Victoria. And the main news again. Some celebrities today joined members of the I Stand with Nigeria group to protest in Lagos. The protest went ahead in spite of the decision of popular musician Two Face to pull out at the last minute. Also today, Vice President Yemi Oshibajo gave the assurance that the government understands the pains of Nigerians and is doing everything possible to improve the standard of living. The Vice President, who also said he spoke with President Muhammadu Buhari today, so the president is hale and hearty. And tech giants Apple, Facebook and 95 others have joined the legal battle against President Trump's immigrants ban order. And that's the news at 10 tonight. Thanks so much for staying with us. I'm Idroma Kunyato. Do have a good night.